it's your open source advocate and I'm back with another video and today I'm going to talk about AppFlowy. Now if you've never heard of this, it is a notes taking app, but it's really an alternative to Notion. And Notion is a lot more than note taking, it's really kind of a project planning, project management application as well. It's got a lot of really cool features in it. So if we just scroll down their main page here, you can really see some pretty cool stuff. So they've got get things done, so you can list out things that you want to finish. They've got the Kanban view, so to ship projects faster, you can work through your projects this way across the boards. Really a nice way to work on things. There's lots of applications out there that do this, but AppFlowy is open source, which makes it really great. Plan and manage your content calendar. So the calendar view is really important when you're doing project management to know when things are coming, what things you're expecting to get done, when you're expecting to get them done. Um, for me as a product manager, I love to plan out my releases and I try to put those on certain days on the calendar. We like to avoid weekends because we don't have a lot of support coverage on the weekends and we don't want to release near the weekend so that we have a lot of calls coming in if anything happens. We prefer to, to release earlier in the week. So I can look at that calendar and see where those things should fall and try to plan them out a bit ahead of time. So a calendar view is really great for any kind of project management. The dark mode is really nice, so as you guys know, I try to keep things in dark mode to save your eyes when you're watching the videos. Um, but yeah, for them to build in dark mode just makes it an even better application in my opinion. And then you can write better and faster with AI, so they've added some AI capabilities. It's up to you to take advantage of that if you want to. I'm not sure I'm at that place yet in my life, but it may be pretty good. It just depends. Um, I, I'm still pretty uh, you know, set in writing things myself, I guess is the best way to put it. You can subscribe to their newsletter if you want to get a little bit more information about upcoming updates and things that they're doing, but the team is still working. And one of the things I wanted to see and I was trying to find is where does it store its doc where does it store all of the information that you create? And it stored it in an odd location, so somebody had pointed out, like, you know, this is kind of storing things in a weird place, and it's not really well documented where it's being stored at. They would like to see that documented better, and even the option to choose where it stores the data. And the reason that's important is that you can now choose something like a sync thing folder, or a next cloud folder, or an own cloud folder, or a C file folder, where things are getting synced out to a server, and you can have other devices syncing up, so that you can have app flowy on multiple places, and you can work on those different documents and have that information synced back and forth automatically by your different syncing services. So, really awesome, and I think a really great thing, and it shows that they do listen to their community, they put things on their roadmaps, and they do get them done. Now, I think that was put on the roadmap back in August 2022, and I just saw that it was updated like two weeks ago as being closed but they did get to it that doesn't it doesn't always mean things are going to happen fast but when they do happen over time I think that's great and that shows that they're listening and that they're working on those things that's really awesome so we're going to go over app flowy and show you guys how to get it installed on your systems and up and running right after this I want to say thank you to all of my subscribers and all of my patrons over at patreon seriously you guys make this so worth it for me to do these videos every week I really truly enjoy it and I just can't say thank you enough if you're enjoying these videos, subscribe. Let YouTube know that I'm doing a good job by subscribing to the channel. Plus, you'll get notified when I have new videos coming out. And finally, if you're enjoying what I'm doing, give it a like. Just click on that thumbs up, and that way YouTube knows that you like it, and they'll pass it along to other people that might enjoy my content as well. I really appreciate it. Thank you again. Let's get started. One of the things I've gotten to where I really like to do is to one, show you the GitHub page for these applications that are open source, but also to show you the license. So if you're ever wondering what's the license like on this application, because there's lots of different licenses out there that are open source licenses. Um, it just depends on what application you're looking at as to which license they choose. But right here they say the open source alternative to Notion. So you want to see what does that really mean. You can go out here and you can just click on the license file. I've just opened it up another tab to keep it easy, but they're using the a GPL version 3 so this is basically you can run this thing there's different stipulations inside the license you can read through it but it is an open source license so this is open source software you are free to come download this code modify it any way that you want to contribute it back to the community make make improvements make changes do whatever you want you are expected on open source software to contribute back your changes to the people who started the project so that everybody can benefit from those changes. Now, if you go out and say, I wanted to make this whole thing bright red with red letters and red pictures, you can contribute that back. That doesn't mean that they're gonna accept what you contribute to them. They can say, hey, thanks, but we don't want that. 
Don't be offended if they don't want your changes. Maybe your changes aren't in the direction that they want to take the project, but give them the opportunity to say yes or no and contribute that back. So just be aware of that. I just do like to cover that part. The license is an important part of open source, and I think it's worthwhile for you guys to know what the license is. When we go out to the AppFlowy docs, you'll see the start here page whenever you first get there. And I will have all of these things linked in the show notes and the description as always. You better get to these very quickly and easily, but when you're looking to install things, you might wanna just look under here, 100% data control, unlimited customizations. I mean, just all kinds of great information for you to start with, everything you wanna know about it. And they've got some really good detailed documentation. I mean, there's a lot of stuff here and a lot of this has sections under the subsections. so. Definitely go check those out as well. Make sure you understand what it is you're looking for. When we start looking for the installation methods, they have multiple installation methods. This is really meant to be a local used system. So I'm gonna go here to the Mac, Windows, Linux packages. And if you click on that, either on the left-hand side or where I clicked, you'll come to their assets page, which is basically mirroring their GitHub pages, I'm sure, for their releases. And what you wanna do is look through here for the right package for your operating system. .dmg is a Mac package, that's for Mac OS. Uh, the .zip tells you it's a Mac OS zipped up version, so if you don't want to get the DMG, you can get the zipped up version. They are almost the exact same size, so really the compression doesn't do a lot. In fact, I think the compression makes it larger from the look of it. So it's 43.2 megabytes if it's DMG and 43.6 megabytes if you get the zip file. I'm not sure that you're winning by getting the zip file on that one. The next one down is Ubuntu, which is 18.04 and 20.04. I'm a little thrown off that they don't show a 22.04, but we'll try the 20.04.deb and see if it'll work on this 22.04 version. They've got your Windows x86 64-bit EXE and the Windows Zip if you want that one. Unknown Linux, which is TarGZ. They've got a, a TarGZ file here. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to download that one and look at it. I don't know if I'll show that to you, but I just want to see what's inside of it. Maybe there's a binary in there that'll run. Uh, we can always check that out for sure just to make sure. So when you want to get those those versions, pretty easy to get. Now the other part is they have Flatpak. So Flatpak is kind of my favorite way to install things lately. It seems to, to just be an easier way to install things. As you move down, you can see that they have Brew for Mac, and then for the Windows install, they can tell you, just get the executable directly from GitHub if you want to. That's also an option. So I think I'm gonna go over here and just grab the Flatpak. I know that I'm gonna get the latest version that's available if they've put it on the Flathub, so uh, probably a pretty good way to get it. But if you wanna get the .dev version for Ubuntu, you can do that. If you want the Windows EXE from here, you can grab it, and also the Mac app is right here as well. So we're just gonna copy this. So I'm just gonna hit Control-C to copy. And I'm going to open up my command line info here. So Flatpak's always gonna come up and tell you, here's the thing that it needs to install. You'll just say yes, and it'll start running through installation. Sometimes you'll have to say yes twice because first thing they'll do is tell you, hey, you're about to install a bunch of stuff, and then it'll say, here's the things that it's gonna install. Are you sure? You might have to just confirm again. But we should have AppFlowy installed now. So we're gonna do uh, exit from here, and we'll just go see if we can find AppFlowy right there. We'll start it up and here it is. And it is very bright, so I'll change this to the dark mode as soon as I get a chance. So the first step is tell them where you want to store this data. So I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, see, open this up. Here we go. I'm gonna go to Nextcloud and I'm gonna go into Documents and then let's create a new folder called App Flowy. And we'll store it right there. So I'm just going to pick that location. And you can see it's got it set. So I'm going to say set that. And we'll do the quick start button. And it's going to say welcome to AppFlowy. Here are the basics. So it gives you a little bit of information to start off with. Click anywhere and just start typing. Highlight any text. And use the editing menu to style your writing. If you type slash, a menu will pop up. Select different types of content blocks you want to add. Type slash followed by slash bullet or slash num or create a list. So you can click the checkbox to mark things as done. You can click plus next to any page title in the shoulder and quickly add a new sub page, document, grid, or Kanban board. So this is pretty, pretty nice. This is going to be very similar, I think, to what I have today with Trillium Notes 
where it's going to have, you know, a lot of depth to it, where you can make a lot of depth in your notes and really kind of set things up. So I think that's pretty awesome. Uh, so we've got it installed. It's up and running. And next thing we're going to do is just check out some of the settings real quick. And then we'll get into the user interface overview. Now you can continue down and you can see a little bit more information right off the bat about how to use this. So they give you some really great information up front, kind of as an initial note. Uh, we can click here to get to the settings. So appearance, theme mode. I know you guys are dying for me to switch this back to a dark mode. So let's do that. There we go. There's a nice dark mode. So they have some different highlights. Uh, I'm not sure what I like there. The default is kind of a light blue. They've got dandelion. Uh, I've never seen a dandelion that was that color, but okay. And then they've got this one, which is a nice lavender. So it's kind of up to you, but they do have a few theme settings there. Language. So mine is English, but if you speak a different language, um, primarily you do have a lot of options here. So that's pretty nice. It's always nice to see uh, applications with different language options. Files. So again, we've already told it where we want to store it. That's great. Everything is set. We can open that folder if we want to. And then user information. If you want to change this, you can. So I can put in my name. We've got an icon for my person. So you've got a few different choices here for icons. Um, yeah, I don't think any of those look like me. So that guy looks great. And then you've got an open AI key. If you want to get one, you can put an open AI key in. And again, that will help with using the open AI features. Once you're done with everything in the settings, you can just click away from it and it closes the settings window. Inside the user interface, you've got a few extra things that you should know about. So first, talking about keyboard shortcuts, markdown, and code blocks. If you want to see the guides for these things, they are also in the, in the documentation. So you've got your keyboard shortcuts list, pretty standard shortcuts for the most part, but there may be a few in here that are interesting to you that you might want to go through here, kind of learn about, figure out how to use them. Uh, lots and lots of shortcuts there, which is really great. The other one is your markdown guide. So if you're not sure how to use markdown to create documents and things like that, it's a very powerful language. I'm not sure if this is all of the Markdown options because this seems like a fairly stripped down version of Markdown, but you can do a lot with what they've got here. Um, pretty nice little guide as well. Keeps it pretty simple and pretty straightforward. So we're gonna go in and actually start creating a few different notes. So from the top, you can just click on the plus. If you do any right clicking, nothing shows up really. And then here you'll see these three dots on these individual notes. So you can rename a note, delete the note, or duplicate a note. But we can also just go in and click on plus. And you see we have document, grid, board, calendar, or import. So you can import different things as well. So we'll start simple. We're going to start with a new document. We're just going to call this our note. And out here, we'll want to give this an actual new name. So we're just going to give this rename. And we're going to call this our first note. Pretty easy. And if we go here, we can actually change this to be an H1 by doing pound. You see it just jumps right away as soon as I hit the space. And I can type now our note. And then we can do pound pound for our second heading level. This is my sub title. And I can say this is how we write, <laughs> if I write right correctly, write notes in app flowy. And then I can do a section header with pound, pound, pound. That's a heading three. And we can say instructions, pretty simple. And then you can do things like star, star. This is bold, star, star. And you see it bolds it. And then you can do I believe dash dash, this is, and probably no space, uh, this is italics, is that right? No, uh, tilde tilde. So we can do tilde tilde, this is a strike through comment, so it shows that it's completed. Uh, if you want to make a checklist, you can do hyphen. 
and then open and X and close and that's gonna make your checklist now if you do it without the X so you can do this and then open space open and then when you space I think if you don't space between them there we go it gives you your check where it's an open checkbox and you can start making your checklist and we can say that we want to do something so create a board and then if you hit enter it just continues that checklist until you hit enter twice to get out of the checklist so we can also say create a calendar and then we can do check two times and we're out of our checklist if you just want an unordered list just do dash and hit space and it'll start your unordered list and again you can start creating things milk cookies dog food and so on till you hit enter twice if you want an ordered list just start with number one and it'll start your ordered list and you can say step one step two and so on and again hit enter twice and you're out of your list so pretty easy I mean pretty straightforward on making notes separating notes things like that now if you wanted to make a separator up here uh, you can just do dash 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 and you get a nice little line separator there something that separates things out and right here I think you can also do it with star 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 it does the same thing just creates a line separator oh open the menu for it sorry we can duplicate it or we can delete it and then we can add a new section underneath and it gives you a little bit of information on things that you can add here so pretty simple um, we could do something like a reference to grid so this is kind of nice actually this is a nice way to create different sections in your notes so we do a call out right here let me say make sure not to forget these items again pretty easy nice little call out there kind of hard to read in this case because it's in the dark mode but still really really easy way to do this it's pinned which is great you can pin it and you can put an emoji next to it instead of a pin if you want to so pretty cool so if we go back up to the top here so let's create a board so it gives you a few columns here on your board right off the bat and again you can rename your board pretty quickly so we could just call this um, client one project and over here you can give this like different statuses so there's no status you can add items you have to do so you could say card one card two card three you can say doing I mean just really simple but you can also add columns here so if you don't like these columns I imagine you can get rid of them make this full screen so that we can see them here so we've got no status something that has to be done something that we're doing and something that's done so in the upper right corner if we click on settings you'll see here we've got a few different options if we click on properties it's going to open up and we've got an opportunity here to kind of change our statuses so if you don't like the statuses that they've got you can change this from to do doing none you can go here and you can just rename this to um, needs to be done you could also set this up as different person's responsibilities you could say Brian for this one you could call this one client and then you could call this one review and then we could add a new column if we want to as well and we could call this complete so we've got a few different options click on plus you get a new card click away from the card you can now edit the card and you can delete the card but I can drag the card to different statuses so as I'm doing this this is for me I can open this up I've got a really nice way to keep track of different things that I'm doing so again I can click on the plus I get a lot of little options here that I can use inside of this note I can do a lot of things in this card I can make it a lot of different changes and then as I'm adding things to it is something that could be tracked inside of this project and I can move it to in review the client can review that I've done this and we can set it to complete together to show that the project is making forward motion you want things to move to the last column so pretty easy pretty simple Kanban boards are great but there's a lot of control a lot of flexibility here we can go back and we can kind of create something different so let's create a grid so you've got a table this is essentially just a table where you're tracking things a lot of times a project starts with a really simple table where you're just laying out all of the things that need to be done and adding columns that help you identify what is it what phase is it in what step is it part of who's responsible for it so you can do that here pretty easily as well 
And then of course the calendar view, something where you can plan what you need to complete and when you need to complete it by. So here we're starting at the beginning of June. Of course, we're at the end of June. We're heading into July. So we want to kind of look at that area and that skate. So we're about to head into this final week of June. But here I can add an item for Tuesday. And again, I'm just adding things that need to be completed. So I can say contact client. And here I can say set up first meeting. And I can actually make this something a little bit better. Instead of that, I can make this a checkbox and I can say contact client admin set up meeting time for team provide contact information share team responsibilities share team member roles establish initial rough time to completion pretty simple just creating a list of things that i want to do whenever i start this first item you can add tags to help you find things a lot easier which is pretty great and then of course you can duplicate this you can delete this if you need to and then you can add new properties as well so you could call this just anything you want um, we could just call this contact ah here we go here's contact just added some blank ones for no reason. So we added our contact right here. We can actually go in and start adding something. This is Brian Donagill, Brian at fixitdelrio.com. So I've got my app flowy stuff going. I've got my item here on my day. I can check to see what am I supposed to do today? What am I trying to accomplish? And I can come here and look and I can work through this checklist while I'm on the call, on the, on the video call, whatever with the client to make sure things are getting completed. And as I'm going, I can add more notes for each of these items or I can do that in the Kanban board. I can create those different things. So it's really a cool way to manage your projects, but also manage your notes, manage your reminders, manage things that you want to get done and you want to keep moving forward. The best thing is this is all being stored in my next cloud so I can go set this up on another machine. I can use app Flowy inside of my phone device um, and I can set that up to look at next cloud as well so that I'm getting those things synced between my different devices. Uh, pretty exciting and I think it's pretty cool. App Flowy is pretty straightforward, pretty easy to use. I think you guys are really gonna like it. It's a really cool note-taking application and it runs locally. It keeps your data stored locally, which I really appreciate and it lets you choose where you put that data as you saw earlier. So get out there and try it. Let me know what you think of it. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, like, subscribe, tell your friends about it so they can come along on the open source journey with us, and I'll talk to you next time. It's your open source advocate, and I'm back, and I've set up a store with a little bit of merchandise. I love being your open source advocate, but I want you guys to be the open source advocates with me. So if you want to, get out there and get some of this stuff. And if you do, let me know what you think of it. Thank you for subscribing.